morning and thanks for joining us for Argo News. I'm Norma Haas. And I'm Peter Jutris. I would like to give a personal reminder to all the student body that it's never too late to pursue a degree that you want. Are you looking for a challenge? Or maybe you're looking to fine tune certain skills you have to appeal to new potential bosses. So if you're wondering why you should be a communication major, it's not because it's an easy major. It's because what we do every day is communicate with people. If you know how to communicate well, if you know about argumentation, if you know how to understand messages that are coming your way, whether they're electronic or whether they're written, then you'll be ahead of the game. Um, it's also enjoyable, but really it's an everyday skills kind of major. Um, every block of life, every profession really needs someone with excellent communication skills. It's one of the things that most employers ask for is graduates with really good writing and communication skills and not everybody has that so if you want to get those you should be a communication major. I like to approach my classes as seminar courses so there's a lot of give and take between me and the students. Um, I'd like to have the students do their reading and then write about what we've learned um, and I do have exams but I really like it to be sort of a give and take and make sure they're having a little bit of fun, which encourages them to come to class and, and enjoy it. And I, I want to go to work and enjoy my work. Um, that's why I, I, that's why I teach. It's not because I want to buy four Ferraris. It's because I like teaching. I want to get up every day and think, oh, good, I get to go to work today. Paul Pilger is one of the visiting instructors here at UWM. If you have additional questions or anything more specific pertaining to the communications degrees, you can visit the communication department at Building 36. I'm Sarah Blavis, reporting for Argo News. Television is a pretty fascinating career and has seen many people blab their way through it. Television is always evolving, but sometimes the faces remain the same. I think what made me decide to go into television is that my first time I ever, ever seen a TV station, the gentleman introduced me to, to the actual process and uh, that gave me the bug. And I got in there and got my hands on and, and everything. And, and I think that's what made me want to get into TV. My first directing job was pretty funny. Um, they sat me down in a chair and said, here's your show. It was probably one of the biggest shows on, on Blab Television at the time. Um, I happened to be in the studio and I had to do a satellite remote with Dolly Parton, of all things. And so, that was my first directing job. Um, I would never forget it. I was sweating bullets the entire time. It was fun and I got through it. I got, I got involved with Blab Television um, by transferring myself over from a PBS station to over here. Uh, there was a shirt, certain show called Gourmet Cooking. Um, that was a national cooking show at one time. So we transferred over here. Um, they wanted me as their camera person and I've been here ever since. I don't think there's really a hard part about working in TV. I mean, if you love your job, you love your job. Um, of course, there's some stress from time to time, and there's a grind from time to time. But, you know, I, I love my job. If you're going to approach a TV station or any kind of television station, um, you need to become a sponge. And what I mean by that is to learn everybody's job. In other words, learn the audio person's job, learn the camera person's job, learn the director's job. Um, if you do that, you'll, you'll become very successful in television. To learn more about Blab TV, go to blabtv.com or check your local listings. Reporting for Argo News, I'm Matt Chamberlain. Being a single parent isn't an easy job, but there are some resources to help you be the best parent you can be. Not every pair of parents stays together. Some go through parenting by themselves. Um, a typical day for me consists of a lot of dirty diapers, um, a lot of cleaning around the house, a lot of playing, um, and then work. The biggest support system is my parents. They help me out a lot um, with babysitting and stuff. Um, and my friends, they help me out a lot too with just like a lot of advice as well as babysitting and they're just always there for me to my parents and my friends. First I was depressed. And then I, had, I realized that I had to put that aside, like put my feelings and emotions aside to be able to take care of uh, Landon the way he needed to be taken care of. So um, there's a lot of good things about being a single parent. Um, 
You get to choose how you want to raise them. You uh, get to spend all your time with them. You don't have to worry about anyone else, so you get to focus just on them. There's no arguing on how to raise them. There's no um, arguing, period, so there's no like negativity around. A few times, just because they think that you're supposed to be with the father of the child, but other than that, not really. I would not change anything, because I, I believe everything happens for a reason, and I got a beautiful child out of, of it, out of it, so <laughs> I wouldn't change anything. I would tell other single parents to not give up and uh, remember who you're doing it for. Um, don't sell yourself short and don't beat yourself up about not being good enough. Um, and just because you parent differently doesn't mean it's the wrong way because everyone parents differently. So. Jessica wouldn't change her situation for the world. Being a single parent is hard, but you have to believe in yourself. I'm Caitlin Lee reporting for Argo News. The Veteran Resource Center can be a very helpful resource, but what do our veterans think of this program? The transition between military and civilian life can be difficult. Uh, based on the job I had in the military, I didn't want to uh, pursue that same type of career in the civilian world, um, so my options were somewhat limited um, and then I also had uh, the GI Bill that we should obviously pay for school so it was a little bit easier on me to go back to school so uh, that's what I decided from there basically. I had a little bit more uh, freedom as far as like not being what they're told as much because I was an NCO uh, right when I got out so I was uh, more on the giving end of that than receiving um, but even then getting out uh, I think, I think the hardest part about transitioning was uh, just uh, because our li our lifestyle in the military is so much different than uh, civilian lifestyle. Uh, basically, just the communication part. Um, I don't usually go to seek help from others, um, even when sometimes I probably should. I like to try to do and figure out stuff on my own. Uh, I've I've been there t a couple times. Um, not for much. I had a buddy that was really big into it uh, after he got out, but I think it was just it was just me not really wanting to use external sources like that. We all have a lot we can learn from the veterans on campus. I'm Megan Hancock reporting for Argo News. Wondering what to do once class is out? It's not hard to find something entertaining on campus. With all the events that go on here in the Commons, it's no wonder why students say that this is the heart of campus. We put on a variety of events. Every semester we have about like over 10. So that ranges from comedy night, uh, we have fright night for the Halloween special. Um, tonight we have painting with Cab. Um, so we, we vary it in um, having the students getting involved in it and not just having it always be a show. We want it to be more interactive and like get the students involved during our events. So um, we've already had a hypnotist come. So um, it's, a, it's a wide variety. So we plan um, in the spring semester for the new school year. So last April, I, I believe it was like April, um, we came together as an executive board and we decided like, okay, what kind of small events do we want to do? Maybe a small show or maybe a small interactive event. And then we're like, okay, let's think large. What kind of large interactive event can we do? Um, and so we plan that in advance, like before we even go into the summertime um, as an executive board with our advisors. Well, perfect thing to get involved with CAV is first you can start coming to our events. That is awesome. But a very direct um, role in getting involved with CAV would be um, becoming a, a cabbie, excuse me. And cabbies are essentially just volunteers for our events, and they can also come to the all cab meetings that we have the first Tuesday of every month. Um, cabbies range from freshmen to seniors. Um, it's definitely a great stepping stone to becoming a part of cab, like being on the executive board through app applying for it. But um, cabbies help with uh, signing in where you swipe your knowledge card. They help. Um, keep the area clean, like picking up trash, directing students, inviting them. You know, if we have an event in the Commons Auditorium, we try to have people out here to be like, hey, did you know there's a cab event going on? So our cabbies really help with that because as an executive board, 
we're busy making sure everything's flowing right. So little, little uh, helpful people like that, the cabbies, not that they're little, but yes, um, they help. So start as a cabbie and work your way up and getting experience with cab. For more information on volunteering for cab, email cab at uwf.edu. I'm James Wiggins, reporting for Argo News. Are you looking to improve your public speaking skills? The speech and debate team can help you with that. Looking for a club that's relatable? Check this one out. It's debatable. We really try to recruit you know, anybody who has an interest because nobody comes in or very few students come in and they're already all set and ready to compete. I mean, sometimes we get somebody who's competed in high school, but for most people, they just, everybody walks in at about the same level. So we usually run them through and show them all the different types of events and talk them through. I make everybody in our team start with what we call the platform speeches. So they have to do a persuasion or an informative or an after dinner speech first, because I think it's really important to learn the process of how to write a really good speech. And they don't have to write a different speech for each tournament. So they pick one topic and you use that speech the whole year, but after every tournament you get feedback and then we make tweaks based on the suggestions from other coaches. So when you see a particular problem get pointed out several times, then we address that. Um, sometimes we get just random comments, we sort of ignored those, but it seems counterintuitive, but when you're doing the same topic all year, by the end of the year, I think a couple things happen. First, you become an expert on some bizarre thing and the rest of us on the team have heard your speech a thousand times, so then we all become experts on bed bugs or some other random topic. Um, but because you're doing that process all the time and you're using the same formatting, you eventually start sort of thinking in that same formatting. So when you have to make an argument or a speech in another class, you start thinking in terms of, okay, I have to have a strong introduction, I have to have you know, well-crafted preview statement and everything should flow in a linear process. And I think ultimately my goal is to have students start writing that way as well. If you're a student at UWF and interested in strengthening your speech and debate skills, join the forensic team. I'm Erica Dukes, reporting for Argo News. There are many different events that help out the city of Pensacola. Here's one that happened recently. Ever since Pensacon started five years ago, it has brought in well over $8 million to the city of Pensacola. If you haven't been there yet, here's what to expect. The main thing I would say for someone who doesn't know what to expect at Pensacon is to expect a crowd, but a crowd of people that are just like you, interested in things that you are interested in, and expect to explore and discover new things. Also expect to meet some new friends. The trolley situation, uh, I don't think there's enough trolleys or they're not, I didn't need to be like locators on the trolleys so that people could understand where they are, how they're going, how they're moving, if they're full. I think the Bay Center needs to expand because number one, Pensacola makes a lot of money from us being around in the city, from getting to explore through Pensacon. I've explored Pensacola more than I ever would have without it. And I've been living in this area for over 20 years. But also within the Bay Center, if we had a larger Bay Center, we could have shorter lines, have more guests, have more people on the venue floor and just make it a bigger, better event. <laughs> Pensacon might be winding down, but if you want to know what's going on for next year and who's going to be there, check out their website at pensacon.com. I'm Kahea Cameron Allen, reporting for Argo News. With Pensacon comes cosplay. Cosplay has been, has been around for a long time now and has an ever-expanding community. It's amazing to see how some of your favorite characters can actually come to life. With all the excitement about Pensacon, it's good to start looking into the cosplay community. Thing that like you create based off of somebody else's idea, and it's almost like what's the word? It's like this part of modernism. You know, I'm thinking of art terms now, um, like a shareable sort of 
appreciation. On the technical level, it's the same thing. It's showing an, showing an appreciation for a character that you like. And a lot of people do that on Halloween, but there's a quality control sort of thing going on in the cosplay community. It's, it's you're doing your hair, you're doing all these things, you're like contouring your face, you're trying to look as like humanly possible as you can as that character and then represent that character in that way. It doesn't matter what weight you are, what your skin color is, or in, like your gender even. Crossplay is very popular. Um, you can cosplay whoever you want. Projects I've done, um, well like all the ones I'm wearing, <laughs> this that I'm wearing, um, this took a lot of work and it was really obnoxious to work on. It's an entire suit of armor. My favorite. <laughs> no, it can be difficult at first to start up because you don't know like where safe places to buy things or like sometimes people start out not knowing how to sew or not knowing how to do anything and just immerse yourself. There's so many like tutorials out there for wig styling, armor building, sewing, even basic tutorials for sewing would help. I just think you just need to educate yourself, like learn as many skills as possible. Cosplay can seem like a hard habit to get into, but with an ever-expanding community, there's always someone there to help. I'm Norma Haas, reporting for Argo News. The UWF men's basketball team had a dominating win on Senior Day. Argo News reporter Vanessa Peralta tells us what's next for the team, including the playoffs. The UWF men's basketball team had a successful win on senior day against the Union Bulldogs. Oh, today was it was really good. Um, I didn't it didn't hit me until I started talking in front of the crowd that this is um, my last home game of the season. But it, I felt like we did good. They're they're a tough team. They have good uh, pieces on it. But I didn't think we were gonna lose today. This was just our night. It's senior night, so we all fall hard throughout the season. And I was shocked, really. I didn't. It, it's it's an out-of-body experience because I didn't think I was doing that much until I really just sat down and they made a highlight and I was like, okay, well, I'm, I'm kind of done a little bit to just really humble myself. But it was it was nice uh, and to, the support I got from people all around was it was pretty neat. That was it was it was a very it was a good experience for me to sit and watch because I've seen some fans and they've been at every game and I just appreciate every time they came out and supported me and, and they were like, you know, they interact talking to me, I met their kids and I appreciate every fan that came out. Mm -hmm. One, it helps you strive. Uh, it Being on the basketball court is different things you have to um, obstacles you have to jump through so I just put that on my day to day life because I'm a social worker and I apply that to my uh, major so I mean I like helping people. I don't think there's any person that I can't help, and that just basketball just transcends off of that. With this win, the men's basketball team had the best record in program history. They have one game left in their regular season before they host the first round of the Gulf South Conference Tournament here at the UWF Fieldhouse one week from today. I'm Vanessa Peralta reporting for Argo News. And that's all for Argo News this week. Next week on Argo News, Trump's hair. Is it a fox? Is it a bird? Is it alive? Find out next week. I'm Norma. And I'm Peter. Good night.